Hey guys, welcome to the first recap. Um, this is something that I want to start doing every single week now because I know that sometimes you're just not able to be with us on a Wednesday. And so I want to make sure that you're not missing anything because we talk about some awesome stuff and we dive into some really um, important topics uh, each week. And so this is just a little recap, a short recap to uh, help you stay um, in the know. And uh, if something that you feel like somebody else needs to hear, you can share it with them pretty, pretty easily because um, we'll be on YouTube. So um, this past week, we did a one week series and I have questions uh, kind of week. And the topic that we covered was arguing. Uh, we at, right now in our country, we're at a time where arguing is at an all time high, right? We see it everywhere we look. Um, all you have to do is be on you know, Facebook or Twitter or something for just a few minutes and you'll see people arguing about something political. It seems like we can't get away from it. And the truth is, we all argue. We all have moments where we're in arguments, where we're arguing with people, um, whether it's, you know, uh, fighting with a sibling over what you're going to watch or whose turn it is to do, to take out the trash that night. Um, we've all been there. We've all gotten into arguments and we all have our different styles of arguing, right? Um, for some people, it's just to be really loud. Um, for some people, it's to exhaust you to just not stop talking until you give up. Um, for some people, it's silence. Um, they just they just clam up and, and walk away. Um, for some people, it's passive aggressiveness, right? Um, you, you get your point out and then you also make some sort of little snide remark. Uh, or for some people, it's just plain out uh, aggressiveness. But at the end of the day, um, we all fight. And we all have things that we will fight for. There are just certain topics and subjects that will absolutely trigger us and get us into an argument. We all have those things that we're willing to fight for. Um, people can say little statements, you know, like, LeBron is the GOAT. And that can start a massive uh, debate and argument or, you know, um, school should be year round or cheerleading's not a sport. Like those things can inspire passion and arguments all the way around. Or sometimes it's more about more serious stuff. Um, as you're arguing with your parents about wanting more freedom or um, thinking about who actually is doing all the work in the group project, right? Or, or maybe it's uh, sometimes it's even bigger than that. You know, who will win the election? Who should win the election? Or what should people do about guns or immigration or women's rights? These things are big things that people are arguing about. And, and sometimes these arguments and conflicts can make us really, really uncomfortable. Um, and, and when that happens, we tend to respond in a few different ways. Um, sometimes we go straight to anger, right? That's the, That can be our first response sometimes. We just get upset and angry. And we're pretend, uh, it's kind of us versus the enemy. We pretend the other side doesn't even exist almost. Um, sometimes we can feel torn. We're not really sure... Where we stand, we can kind of see things on both sides, and so it's hard to um, make a decision. We feel like we should maybe be more passionate about something, but we're just not quite there. Um, and sometimes we just want to stand back and watch the watch the fight happen. We couldn't really care less, um, and so we just kind of avoid it. Um, but when it comes to arguments, one thing is true. When we're in an argument, we all want to win. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't get in arguments to lose. We all want to win. We all have our stubborn streaks in us. Um, me, probably more than most. I definitely like to win and I definitely don't like to give up. Um, but it's true. We all want to win. And, and that's never felt more important than it does right now. I mean, it feels like we're just surrounded by people who are always for or against something, right? That there's always some argument over some big topic everywhere we turn. It's like we can't get away from it. So I think with that being our reality that we're living in, that conflict and arguments are just something that we can't get away from. It is something we're all experiencing right now. Um, I think God has something that he wants to speak into that. And so we looked at um, a passage from the book of James, which is a really interesting book. Um, James was a brother of Jesus who actually um, did not really believe Jesus was the son of God while he was walking around, um, which if you, you know, have siblings and one of them comes home and tells you that they're the son of God, you could imagine how you might react in that situation. Um, maybe some of your siblings act like they're the son of God um, as they walk around the house. Else. And I can imagine that James and and uh, probably had his arguments and disagreements and conflicts um, as and could get you know frustrated with Jesus and so that's why it's really interesting to see 
um, what he has to say about conflict. And so we looked at this passage in James chapter 1, verse 19. This is what it says. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, from what we read in the Gospels, like I said, James wasn't super supportive of what Jesus was doing. And I could imagine him maybe having some conversations and being quick to tell people maybe his brother was a little crazy, right? Maybe the same way you might if your brother came home and told you that he was the son of God. Or, or maybe he was um, quick to tell people that there was no way that Jesus could be this person that he was claiming to be. He's like, no, I mean, I was around when, you know, Jesus was still peeing, peeing the bed and, uh, and you know, making tables. Like, I, I know this guy. Or maybe he was quick to defend why uh, he thought what he did, right? Or maybe he was um, quick to, to fight or quick to try and convince everyone else that he was right. I can imagine all of those scenarios because I've been – in some of those scenarios myself. And and that might have been how James was, and that is until he realized that he was wrong. At some point, James realized that Jesus really was the Son of God. And, and it changed everything for him. It changed his whole perspective. It changed uh, how he thought about arguing and how he looked at the world. He changed his mind about Jesus and saw him for who he really was. And so James gives us the instructions. He instructs us to listen first. Whether we think we're right or wrong, whether we know the whole story or don't even care about the whole story, he tells us to listen first. And I think this is probably one of the most important things we can do because it seems like we live in a culture that doesn't really care about listening. But James also tells us to listen first and listen with the intent of learning. See, a lot of times in arguments, we'll listen just so that we can go and get our point across after they're finished. James is, saying, James is saying, be quick to listen, like actually hear what another person is trying to say. And then he says to be slow to speak and slow to anger. And, and I don't want you to mishear that. He's not saying not to speak, right? He's not saying not to be passionate, but he's saying be slow to do those things. I mean, we've all had issues that were, we've been worked up about. But I'd, I'd be willing to bet that in the recent past, you had some things that you would argue about that, that just aren't quite important anymore, right? That, that sometimes we get upset and argue about things that as we get older, we just we forget about them or they just become unimportant. But one thing that never gets less important is the relationships that we're in. The relationships between our friends and our parents and our siblings, those don't get less important. We have to emphasize people over our points. And the bottom line is this. We never win an argument if we lose the relationship. You will never win an argument if you lose the relationship. Because we always ask, like, how can we prove that we're right? Or how can we win an argument? But I think that's the wrong question. I think the other the question that we should be asking is how do I win the relationship? How do I argue about this and discuss this and engage in this conflict while maintaining the relationship that I have with this person? Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the other person understands that our relationship with them matters more than what we disagree on. And that's got to become the point. So we got a couple steps to help you do this. Um, the first is to memorize James 1.19. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. That's going to help you. If you memorize that, if you have that sitting at the forefront of your mind when you get into an argument, it will absolutely give you the roadmap to have that conflict well. The second is to pause and pray. That, that slow to speak and slow to become angry is encouraging you to take a moment in the middle of your argument and pause and pray for the person that you're having an argument with. 
because our brains tend to put people in boxes and categories to help us process the world pretty easily. But when we pause and pray, what we're doing is we are actively shifting how we think about someone. We're going from an argument and a point to recognizing them as a person. And that's what this is all about. You can't maintain a relationship unless you recognize them as a person. And then the last piece of this is to empathize with them. And this is a tough one. But empathy is what happens when you put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Everybody we argue with, whoever we disagree with, usually has more to their story than we know. They have a reason they think the things that they do and, and believe the way that they do. And so we need to try and put ourselves in their shoes. We need to try and understand them so well that we can articulate their feelings to them in a way that they would agree with. If we can do those three things, we will help maintain relationships through disagreements. Memorize that, James, that passage in James 119. Pause and pray and empathize with the person that you're having a disagreement with. Man, I just like to imagine a generation of people who instead of digging into their camps and, and sitting down in their trenches of belief and just lobbing grenades at each other across a field, I like to imagine a generation of people that were able to see each other as human beings and value the relationships more than they value their points or being correct. What kind of world would it look like if we lived that way? Anyways, that's all for us this week. That's what we talked about. Um, man, let that radically change the way you argue and the way that you go about how you treat people. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.